Welcome to Davin's Random. I'm Davin, and today we're doing the brakes on my FJ. And so it's going to be a how to and brake review. Today we are upgrading. So these are the ECCPP brake rotors and pads. And these are ceramic pads that they offer. This is a kit on eBay. I was really reluctant about these at first, but they're pretty good. So, anyway, let's go ahead and dive into it. Okay, so this is an eBay kit. You probably buy these on Amazon too, but these are the rotors, and these ECCP rotors are actually pretty damn good. Um, I'll compare them to the full ones when we get off, but you can see these are cross drilled and slotted. The one thing that you don't want to experience on an FJ is brake fade, and I have experienced that, and it's not pleasant, especially when you're four wheeling and going downhill. A little bit of a nightmare, but you can see that these are pretty well made. We'll compare them to the stock rotors as soon as we get them off. And then these come with ceramic pads for this particular kit. Now the reason why I'm saying it's review is because I'm doing the fronts, but I did the back ones probably over a year ago, maybe 32,000 miles ago, and these are great. So I've got to do a tire rotation, so I'll show you how these are holding up. And the first thing I got to do is pull the tires off. So let me get started and we'll do that. Oh yeah, and I broke a lug nut. So I got to fix my broken lug nut as well. All right, here's what we're looking at. So you can see pretty even pad wear. And these rotors, really thick. Uh, yeah, they're just, they're holding up great. Um, still smooth, no ridges built up in them. Now one thing I can tell you, the reason why I like this ECCP stuff is after I did the rears, I noticed how much better they were grabbing than the front. And then I got lazy for six months and didn't bother doing the front. But anyway, uh, now it's time to do them. But it, the rear ones are holding up amazing. And like I said, they do grab better. So hopefully this will even everything out by doing the front. Now the front, you can see it's pretty much time to do them. They're worn down to just about nothing on the inside. Um, no ridges on this, these are the stock rotors, but we'll compare these as soon as I get these off. So let's go ahead and pull these off here. Let's see if I remember how to do this. So the first thing you have to deal with is the anti-rattle clip. And that's gonna be the first thing that comes off and you're gonna need a little screwdriver for that. So we're gonna go ahead and pop these off. And they're just clipped on this little inside lip and then they kind of just sit like that and then these pins have little um, cotter pins stuck in the ends and so those cotter pins need to come out so you need some needle nose for that okay so one's out strange oh maybe that's a factory pin okay then you can pull these pins out. The anti-rattle clips out. And at this point the pads are just going to come out. But I'm going to leave the pads in there because we've got to spread these. So for that you can pretty much just use a regular screwdriver and just kind of work them back a little bit to press them back. Very slowly. Uh, so basically what you're doing is you're prying between the pad and the rotor and pressing the uh, cylinders back into the caliper. And these are four pot cylinders so you got to do top and bottom. And you go in until they are completely and all the way in as far as they can go. Uh, 
maybe even use a little little pry-y thing to kind of squeeze them back just to make sure they're all the way back and then at this point the pads pretty much slide out and this is the anti-rattle clip and I didn't look on the new pads to see it but we may have to reuse these so if we do then you need some some brake goo to make sure that they don't squeak on the back of these not a big deal but anyway this is the actual clip itself and usually it's stuck on um, but I noticed more and more pads actually come with that already on there so who knows maybe these did maybe they didn't I don't know anyway now we gotta take the caliper off itself uh, to be able to get to the rotor so for that we're gonna have to undo these two bolts that are way back here swing this around this side so you can see what we're gonna have to do but it's this bolt and this bolt and once that's off this can come out of the way and we have to kind of hang it or set it on something so you don't put any stress on this brake line because that is one thing that you don't want to do is stress the brake line feeling very ill prepared today There's a socket in my socket. Okay, so there's that. These bolts back here are probably 17 millimeters. I'm guessing. I guessed correctly. When in doubt, get a breaker bar. These are on there. Oh. Okay. So, chunks of wood are always good to have around. Oh, you can set the caliper on that. Now, give you one chunk of wood. There we go. Just kind of prop it up there. Now it's just getting the rotor off. So this is pretty much just rusted in place. You can see my broken lug nut. So they give you these little holes and this bolt turns out it's the right thread to go in here so what you can do is just screw that in on both sides and that should release it. Yep. So you heard the ting there. Now we'll do this side. And then that'll pop it free. There we go. And there's our factory rotor. I'm pretty sure that these are factory rotors uh, simply because the person that owned this before me was doing all dealership maintenance. But these are the replacement rotors. You can see these are about the same thickness, same venting gaps in between, which is really good. Uh, cheaper rotors will have less venting, they'll be spread farther apart, and usually thinner metal here. So these ECCP rotors are made really, really well. And the cross drilling, if you look on here, 
the cross drilling actually the holes match in between these ribs. Lug nut. Gotta replace my broken lug nut. So just make sure you get it off to the side where the, the bolts are not in the way. And it'll pop out just like that. So now I gotta screw a new lug nut in. And we have that one right here. And that lug nut catastrophe was brought to you by my local tire shop. So in order to get this on, I'm going to use a bunch of big washers. Um, this will allow me to create kind of a gap that you need to be able to pull it on because this will just suck right up if we can use the original lug nut on it. And it should just uh, grab it and go. Plus these are kind of self-centering, which is good. So why is he using a crescent wrench? Because I'm too lazy to go get the regular wrench that I need. This is the reason why. Okay, so we can get it started right there. Now that looks like it's going on pretty well, so now I'm going to cheat. Just use my impact gun. And it's on. Okay, so now I just install the rotor. And then our caliper to help hold it on. He should be torqued. It's probably somewhere around 75 foot pounds. But just good and tight. Should be fine. And this little bolt goes back in up here. So before I install our pads, I'm going to go ahead and spray this and make sure it's clean. We still can. Normally I spray it before I put it on here, but I was talking to you guys and I forgot, so there you go. Now you can see what I was talking about. The uh, anti rattle plates are already on here, so no need to lube anything, they just pop right in. There is no left or right, um, they just go in. And they go in with the little whole side up. And then they have to go through these little holes so usually if the pad's almost touching, like if it just fits on that rotor perfectly, then you should be able to feed it through the holes. So here's our pins. So slide your pins back in. This one's going to need the anti-rattle clip installed back on it. So it has to sit in here to kind of spread those apart, just like so. And then this slides around and goes in that hole just like that. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is put on two lug nuts and get those tightened up. All they're doing is just kind of putting a little bit of pressure on the rotor. And then uh, a quick pump of the brake. That is it. Now at this point I am going to do a little bit of bleeding. Um, 
Not me personally. I gotta put my clips back on. These factory clips just slide back on and clip in. Here's the other one. At this point, I always like to just breathe the brakes out a little bit. Okay, so these are 10 millimeter. So what we're gonna do is open this valve up. And then uh, I'm going to have my girlfriend step on the brakes and we'll kind of give it just a quick, quick bleed on this side. Pro tip on bleeding the back brakes. On the back brakes on FJs, everything is done through an electronic valve. So the accessory, the key has to be turned in onto the accessory position to give it power. And then in this case, I've got my girlfriend in there and she's going to go ahead and press down on the brakes. So go ahead and press down on them and you can hear it actuate and then I'm going to open this up and that's the only way you're going to get brake fluid out of this. So go ahead and pump them again and hold it down and that's pretty much it. So what we're looking for is good clear fluid. If it's brown, keep going until it's clear and then add more fluid to the reservoir as you need it. For the front brakes, you don't actually have to have the key on. They can be bled regular. Why is this? I have no idea. So, let me loosen up this valve here. Whoa! <laughs> well, we got that bled. <laughs> that kind of shot all over everything. Okay, so go ahead and pump them up. Hold it. Hold it down. Okay, pump them up again. There we go. Hold it down. Yeah, so you can see we're running clear, so that is good. As long as this stuff is coming out clear and not brown, you're in good shape. I just have to clean up that mess. <laughs> okay, that's it. So the last thing that has to be done, well not last, but almost last, we still have to bed the brakes, but we're going to go ahead and put in some DOT3 brake fluid, that's all this requires. If you look under here, that is your max line, so we just want to fill it up to that. Right now we're at the minimum, we're just going to add a little bit. All right, now we're at max. And now we got to go bed these. So let me show you how to do that. Yeah. So go ahead and start the car up and then pump the brakes several times before you decide to move it because if for some reason they're not grabbing, you may not be able to stop. That might kind of suck. So anyway, we know it's working. So now we got to bed the brakes, and this is the last thing, and this is what they don't tell you in a lot of YouTube videos, but a lot of brake specialists actually know about. And to bed the brakes, do this driving around your neighborhood, that way your neighbors will think you're crazy, and then they'll avoid talking to you next time they see you, because they're like, what the hell is this guy doing? So I'm coming up to a stop sign, and I'm just touching the brakes, and you're going to keep doing this. So you can speed up, not a lot, 20 miles an hour, and then slam on the brakes. And you keep basically rubbing them in. And what this does is it embeds the material of the brake pad into the rotor. And ultimately, it will give you stronger, better brakes. And I can already tell right now that these grab way better than they did before. So if I step on it, Pull it all the way down and that's with anti-lock on so if I really push it <laughs> that crap's really good so that's basically what you have to do and I'm gonna do this for about another two or three minutes it, it's probably 30 stops is about what it takes to get it embedded in 
So anyway, that is how you deal with brakes on a Toyota FJ Cruiser. And the ECCP brakes that I have on this, they're dirt cheap and man, they are excellent. I'm really surprised. Normally ceramic brake pads don't grab as good as uh, regular semi-metallic when you're on the street. They're better for high heat and track use. But in this case, they actually grab way better than semi-metallic. So uh, I highly recommend these. So anyway, I hope you guys like this video. Give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment. Otherwise, we will talk to you guys later. See ya.